Hello, everybody. Uh, time for the video for the big full moon that we have on August the 19th at 27 Aquarius um, that I'm hearing an awful lot of fear about. And there's some very sparky aspects, I will say. And it is happening on, um, the, I believe it's the first day of the uh, Democratic Convention here in the US. But I'm recording this on August the 2nd. So I'm recording this 17 days before the convention. And the delegates for the Democratic Party have already met because of ballot access issues and all kinds of things like that, and have uh, formalized their vote for Kamala Harris as the nominee of the party. Now, I'm hearing a lot of people say that she won't be the nominee, but I really think she will. So we'll see. And anyway, I just didn't. So I'm going to um, let me talk a little bit about the new moon. There's a lot to talk about here. But first, I do want to say, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, you know, all those things, leave me a comment. I often answer most or almost all the comments if I can. Um, I'm, um, and, you know, please, you know, watch to the end. I'm going to pull three cards and show those at the end. I'm also going to uh, compare this full moon with the chart for the USA and the chart for the DNC. Okay, so um, where do we start? <laughs> so, well, first of all, I do want to say this is a full moon on August the 19th. So it's in the eight month, we're in an eight year. It's um, 19th, so it's one and nine beginnings and endings, but that also makes 10, which is one, which is a new beginning, which is, you know, the one. So so we have one, eight and eight, 60, 70, eight. So it's an eight universal day as well. And this is um, at 27 degrees, which I always felt was the number or red was the number of the Bodhisattva, which is, um, you know, a good number. And um, and 27 is a really good number. So actually, let's um, look at that first. Let's look at the uh, numerology of 27. And this, the 27 is a highly intelligent and compassionate and humanitarian number. This is uh, the natural healer, the natural counselor, all kinds of things like that. So really this is very much about kind of like people who want to do good for the people. Okay, so it's a fabulous number. So another thing that that feels really good to me. So, and and just energetically, and I guess psychically, if you want to say, I feel like we really have reached a turning point, shifted timelines, whatever you want to call it. I'm hearing so many people who are not astrologers say that we're shifting timelines, and and that we have everything blown open and changed the whole energy. Um, has changed and then well I'm in the US and I know it has here and I suspect it has in many places despite what the um, news focuses on so <laughs> let's go and dive in first of all into just looking at the new moon chart itself so I've all as always I've set this for um Eastern time for DC time and it's at 2:25 p.m. in Washington DC, and of course the um DNC uh, conference is in Chicago. <laughs> That's also kind of raising people's like oh because the 1968 Chicago convention was crazy and pretty violent, but it was an open convention and this time. Democratic Party are not having that. Nobody's challenging Kamala. So um, 
So it's at 27 degrees Aquarius, which happens to be the same degree as the moon for the USA in the Sibley chart. So, of course, we'll be looking at that. It's opposing. It's a full moon, moon and sun opposite each other, as always on a full moon. Mercury is retrograde, but we have a Kazemi the day before. And I also do not fear uh, Mercury retrogrades. Often things that are begun in Mercury retrograde um, actually have lasted a long time. But we have to remember that we're on, I'm recording this on August the 2nd, and the delegates have confirmed Kamala as, um, as the nominee. So, and by the way, her, um, her, her moon, no, her sun is at 27 Libra. So in a lovely trine to this full moon. And that means, and she was born on a full moon. So um, her moon is in Aries in, in the fifth house and making a lovely sextile to it. So she's quite nicely exact, 27 degrees, her full moon, her Libra Aries full moon is nicely aspected by this. Okay. Now, the reason a lot you're hearing a lot of kind of craziness and fear around this full moon is A, it's exactly square Uranus. And Uranus is still close to Algol. And we did see that, you know, the Uranus Algol conjunction with Mars did kind of lead to a shooting at Donald Trump's um, um, rally where he. Um, um, had a dam had a um, hurt ear. No matter what you think that did it, there was still a shooting. I don't think it was a false strike, but it didn't take him down in that way. But then also the um, Uranus um, Algol Mars conjunction opposed Biden's son and and his Scorpio stellium and led to him stepping down from. Um, uh, the, being a candidate for the next election. So, you know, sometimes um, astrology, people go, oh, you know, this is really bad. Well, you could say it took it took Biden down, but he stepped down with grace and handed it over to Kamala. Um, Trump survived, but now um, his um, star is fading, you know, in many ways right now, because um, we have a candidate who really kind of speaks out and we're, and you know, it's, it's just changed radically, which is Uranus changed the vibe. And Uranus is the modern ruler of this Aquarius moon and in an exact square to it. And the squares can activate change. And it doesn't necessarily mean crazy violence. But anyway, that's my opinion. But also this um, this full moon is the sun is conjunct Vesta, which is the heart of the state. <clears throat> but also you're in a flame. Uh, Mercury can be uh, could be looked at as a change of direction <laughs> and thinking and and, you know, in Leo, this is about leadership and about um, kind of ruling. And it's also Pluto in Leo generation, boomers, that none of the candidates in the Democratic Party, even if she picks the older VP candidates at this point, she has not picked. Are, none of them are boomers. None of them are Pluto in Leo. They're all either Pluto in Virgo or Pluto in Libra. So uh, Generation X or Millennials. But also, look what we have here at this card, in, at this, sorry, fixed Grand Cross. Pallas Athena, Asteroid Lilith, the, the strategist, the wise warrior that had Medusa's head on her shield, facing off to Medusa, who really, you know, if we step out of the patriarchal kind of myths, Medusa was um, this female energy fighting to regain her power. And then Asteroid Lilith, who was another one who's talked to the hand saying, no, I'm taking my power back. This is powerful, radical change. 
And well, that's all I can see. But then also, um, so that's the Grand Cross, and I might come back to talk about some of it as we go. But on uh, the full moon itself, just before Mars catches up to Jupiter, and again, we're getting a lot of fear around that because we have a T-square to Saturn and Venus, and Saturn and Venus are facing off to each other. But here we have Hecate as well, and here we have Nessus. And Saturn is retrograde, so is revisiting things. And Mars and Jupiter are moving towards the Virgo and away from this new start. And this is mutable signs. This just indicates radical shifting and change to my mind. And I feel that. And it's just happening over and over and over again. And if we look at where, you know, the chart on the East Coast, Venus is at the top of the chart and in the sign of service and letting go of the patriarchy. I still think the patriarchy is, you know, ending. Am I saying there won't be any protests outside the convention? Eh, there probably will be. There is at every convention. Do I think they'll be really violent? I actually kind of don't. I think Mars with Jupiter is bringing a radical shift of perspective and radical shift of um, ideas and change. And it's moving more towards the people, to coming together, to humanitarianism, to all those things. So let's stop the share and let's look at this with um, the full moon, with the US chart. So here's the US chart in the middle. So the US chart in the middle has a 12 degree um, Sagittarius rising and incidentally the new moon that is just about to happen as I record this is a 12 Leo in a lovely supportive fiery aspect with Sagittarius rising, which is freedom. And what's one of the messages of the Harris campaign? Freedom. Then the moon, on the, the full moon, it's right on the um, moon of the USA. And I always use this simply chart. Um, I think most astrologers do this a lot. Some astrologers argue about whether which one's right, but it's exactly on it. And I found a great article, which I will actually um, um, link in, um, in the description. And it's by Jessica Adams. And she predicted, and I, I don't really predict, but she does. She's a bit more definitive and, dis and uh, prescriptive. She kind of said that um, the next POTUS will redistribute wealth. She said there's still a lot of astrology you can do and say about 2020. Um, she said um, the winner of the 2020 US election is a future president who is rich. And, and he was, Biden's relatively rich, but wants to give back. Politically, this is a new government for 2020, which leans towards the left. OK. And I think because Uranus is square to this full moon on the DNC, we're leaning further left. Biden has done it. All that we've heard out of Harris's mouth so far is further left. But doing away with trickle-down economics, you know, um, forgiving student loans, all that kind of thing, which I know won't make everybody happy, makes me really happy. <laughs> so anyway, but also uh, US is having a Mars return with Jupiter there on this and, you know, again, I think people think, oh, oh, my God, Mars, always violence. Well, you know, it is in the seventh house, which can be open enemies, but it can also, this can also be not compromising ourselves for others anymore. Because what have the, what have the Democrats done so far? 
always compromised for others, overgiven until we reached a point where, um, you know, the far right managed to bring in those judges, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, yeah, you, you know kind of what side I am, but the astrology is telling me this too. Now then, as you know, so the full moon is on Pallas Athena, remember, strategist, wisdom, um, uh, you know, related to Medusa. Uranus is still on Algol, which is kind of Medusa. I just talked about all of that. This is uh, the Scorpio Pallas Athena and talk to the handler in Scorpio, which often has a revealing of, uh, you know, power, you know, dynamics and things. And this is a fixed grand cross hitting the US chart, really saying, had it enough, it's time for radical change. People, the people, the moon in, Aquari in Aquarius humanitarianism are ready for radical change and a shift in values. And it's going to be dramatic, the shift. And I think it's going to be in a good way, personally. Okay, other things I see, I mentioned in the new moon chart, this um, T-square between Mars and Jupiter and Saturn and Venus. And Venus and Hecate are up here on the black moon Lilith in um, the US chart. So again, women, the divine feminine, whatever you want to call it, rising up, speaking truth and saying it's our turn. And the sun and Mercury and Vesta, the, the hearth, are in the ninth house, which is also the house of um, the courts. and But it's also the house of truth and expansion and freedom. Back to that message of freedom again. I Do I really see anything that kind of... Um, anyway... Also, if we look at the US chart's moon, um, at the time of the birth of the US, the galactic center was at 2343. Now it's at 2711, exactly sextile to the moon and to the full moon. And the galactic center is kind of a new truth, a new freedom, new, all those things. I actually just think it's just going to be, um, it might be intense. It might be a real radical break that will unfold at this point, August the 19th, September, October. We're just two and a half months from the election. I think the message is going to get stronger. People have had enough. It's going down well. She's going up in the polls. In the meantime, Biden, the Scorpio in the background with this on it, is in his 12th house going, let's keep you know, getting these prisoners released. Let's keep forgiving student loans. Let's secure the two billion for black farmers that he also did on August the 1st. Three big things in one day. Uh, Dark Brandon is still doing his business. And you know, anyway, that's, I think it's a really great full moon for, um, for the USA, turning it in, uh, to this kind of like rebirth, renaissance period in all kinds of ways, okay, in, in lots of ways. And then uh, let's have a look at the Democratic Party chart. So the Democratic Party, this is the Democratic Party in the middle here. And this um, full moon is in the fifth house of uh, create of joy, creative self-expression. And this, the 11th house, this is politics and groups and humanitarian organizations and bigger message. And it's almost like they're going, you know, it's our turn again. And Uranus um, on in this chart is in the eighth house. I think there's a big break. I've sensed it already as these younger people come up of breaking with like, you know, the the uh, ruling, but in I, it just feels like a gentler break. Like Pelosi's like, you know, she's done her thing. She's going, I think she'll go. Biden's going. 
you know, they're all getting really old and um, and Biden's going in January um, when um, Harris is inaugurated, which I think she will be. Of course, I'll look at the inauguration chart as well. Um, what else could I tell you? I do want to say as well, the DNC chart has Uranus itself at 27 degrees Capricorn in the fourth house. And this is semi-sextile to this. And, um, and and this is kind of breaking with this the structures as they were. This is a another um, indication. It's also trying. Uranus is trying. Uranus breaking with the way it's been changing. This is. It's kind of like Bernie Sanders wet through. If you like. It's what he's kind of been working towards for a long time or speaking out for, you know, now we've got um, Kamala turning out to be more progressive than, um, you know, ever. Um, the kind of this balloon, which is very Leo of of the uh, um, far right seems to be deflating, just like the, the energy has gone out of it. Also, there's the weird thing, Aquarius, Uranus is the word weird is for that and we've got the weird thing that's come out which kind of makes me think maybe what's will be the thing but anyway um also um let me see if there's anything else i want to say also venus and and hecate uh, are on the moon of the dnc saying service you've forgotten where you're coming from you've forgotten that you are at your root very humanitarian um, very caring about the people, more left leaning, um, you know, and and I don't think that in British terms they are not left. All right, but anyway, but also the global shift is is moving towards um, the pendulum is swinging back more towards the left, um, but I don't mean far far left. Oh. American definitions of what's left and right kill me, but you know, because in in the UK, really what it means is kind of like caring for the people <laughs> and doing the right thing by them and not having this huge wealth gap. Okay, so that's kind of where I came from growing up. Now to go to that Jupiter uh Mars conjunction that a lot of people are finding very um scary. That's up in the ninth house of expansion and truth and saying it's time to be free and time to change things up. I I like it. So for you personally, though, let's go back to this um, full moon. So if you have anything around 27 degrees of the chart, um, like my rising sign, you know, you're going to be feeling it. But I want to look at a few more patterns. So not only do we have this um, fixed grand cross, which can be tense. And I think the change is everything feels like it's changing really fast, like blown open. All right. And, and I just feel there's going to be more big change out of stuck ways and so on. But anyway, you can see that we have this lovely fire grand trine, which is to Eris, hot stirrer, but also taking down the elites, okay? Close to Chiron, the key to healing, um, and the galactic center bringing in, that's bringing in new truth and defragging the old. And this is making a gorgeous kite pattern as well in fire, and fire burns down and is like the phoenix and coming up. And this is the focal point the Aquarius moon, which is the people, which is more humanitarian, doing more good for the people. I, I just think it's so lovely, to be quite honest. You know, I, I can't see anything else. Now, there's one other thing here. The nodes are at seven degrees on, um, on the full moon. Uh, the south node is conjunct black moon Lilith. Kind of said in in Libra, which is kind of saying, you know, no more kind of uh, giving our power away for the sake of peace from the divine feminine, so to speak. 
and moving into kind of our selfness and you know really kind of our essence and speaking up and taking a stand for ourselves that's what the Aries North Node has been ha doing for ages but this these nodes at seven degrees are an exact t-square to Pholus and to Ceres and Ceres is about to station direct not long after this really out of bounds saying this doesn't nurture us anymore what we're living in this the structures our society the the you know the supreme court all these things and sorry to be so u.s centered everybody but you know this is just huge for the usa but it will be felt in the similar way out in the world and it's kind of saying do things differently and figure out how to nurture and care for each other and nurture and care for the earth and society and of course you know um if when when harris wins and you know we've got um labor in the uk and all these other ones starting to kind of win back some power that is good for um the climate because they will do more to um adapt to climate change because it's too too late to completely reverse it either you no matter what you think caused it it's happening um i think we're going to adapt really well so you know i personally i find the full moon pretty exciting so um and uh, um to go just to say if you've got anything around 27 degrees of fixed signs particularly so um that's taurus leo scorpio and aquarius you will really feel it you also feel it if you've got things around um 17 to 19 of the mutable signs so gemini virgo sagittarius and pisces all right and a little bit um the seven degree point of the cardinal signs oh wants to hit everything in my chart but that's okay i've got this i find it exciting um it could be a bit hard on the nervous system okay so you know so you know self-care always and we are going to uh look at the symbols while i pull three cards and um yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> okay so i'm gonna read the sabian symbol first so we always go up so um we go up to aquarius 28 with the sabian symbol and i'm reading from dane rajar this time um so the symbol itself is a tree felled and sawed to ensure a supply of wood for the winter his keynote is knowledge and skill used in its natural surroundings for the satisfaction of vital basic needs. And he said, this is intelligent foresight. And to me, this really kind of speaks to um, uh, breaking things up to address the needs of those that have less or don't have anything. This kind of indicates to me this move towards the left and the more sharing of wealth and um, breaking things up, breaking up, you know, uh, maybe Citizens United will eventually get overturned and it will be the end of the real big gravy train for these uber wealthy mean people. <laughs> like Musk, meanie meanies. Anyway. <laughs> And, and I'm sure there's a lot more I could add in here with all my extra things that I use, but I'm not going to. Um, now then, the Chandra symbols. And I like to read the Omega symbols too. So the entrance, the Omega symbol is the entrance to a vast complex of caves beneath a mountain range. And um, I'm just going to pull one card actually. Okay, there we go. Um, and he says that's trans. This is John Sandbach. He said the this is transforming and receptive. And the degree angel is Ye Yeazel. 
speaking the right words, divine consolation and comfort. He says this degree is intent on exploring the inner workings of life to learn what is underneath things. It questions the purpose and validity of goals and realizes that beneath all striving and desire are other deeper motives, which the person being influenced by them may not even be aware. It seeks out the least obvious aspects of experience for the purpose of reaching a holistic picture by searching for the missing or abandoned pieces. Now then, the Chandra symbol. Because I talk about weaving all the time, that we're weaving a new story. And um, this symbol is a tapestry loom. On it is a half-finished tapestry. This degree is aware of how everything is open and subject to change. Even those things which we think are done may be modified or completely transformed. This is a highly imaginative degree and is at its most power, excuse me, powerful when allowed to continually envision alternate ways of doing things or doing anything rather than being pinned down and limited to one way. It realizes how stifling the following of methods and systems can be and is always able and willing to share insights that open everything to new possibilities. It's all about realizing that no agendas are necessarily the right ones or set in stone. Some wish to scale the mountain's heights. Some wish to delve deeply under them. Now, I do want to have one little caveat, uh, not caveat even, but just clarification, if you like. When I say veering towards the left, I think it's all radically different than what it has before. So, yes, it's towards the left, if you like, in the terms of, you know, breaking systems, changing things up, doing things extremely differently, radical change. But I don't think it's going to look the same as anything we've had before. OK, so just just um, yeah, just. Uh... Anyway, this is three of cups. This is the card. Look at this. Women coming together. It's the plow up there, I think. OK, or is it the one, two, three? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, but anyway, this is about friendships, abundance, cooperation, community, uh, um, siblinghood or peoplehood, if you like, humanitarianhood, joy, communication, celebration, soul family. This is a, a lovely card for this as well. It's just, you know, look at it. I'm just going to let you look again. Three of Cups, Light Seer's Tarot. And um, a constellation. I, I just can't remember where in the sky that is. So the Big Dipper, of course. So the Big Dipper, uh, a large asterism consist, consisting of seven bright stars, which is, what do you say? Yeah, seven. Yeah, it's seven stars on there. Uh, and it's in the constellation of Ursa Major. So Ursa Major Astrology. Because I can't remember where it is in them. Um, so. In Hindu mythology, the Big Dipper represents the seven sages. Um, uh, it's probably one of the ones that most people see. It actually spans 65 degrees of the zodiac in the signs of Cancer, Leo and Virgo and contains 18 named um, stars. And that constellations are different to signs, by the way. 
that spans a vast part of the um of the um zodiac of course so it does um span uh for constellations and fixed stars it does go through leo it covers some really powerful stars which i perhaps should have looked at before but i, I just think that it indicates overall just this that this is going to bring big big change okay i'm just reading the astrology king what he says about this it of course it has no one meaning but it just is highly significant that it covers all of this um energy so all in all you know no matter what you think of the characters you know they are kind of players and they are representative and i talk about the outer world and the politics this is going to happen as without so within radical change locally um top down bottom up all of that there's a shift there's a radical shift and having a fixed grand cross on this full moon i think is going to bring a further radical shift it's this timeline shift is just immense it's huge and um i have people commenting on it all the time who are not astrologers they're not psychics they're not woos they're not they're not in any kind of thing. And um, so don't fear this um, full moon. I think it's going to bring a more quantum, for um, want of a better word, recognising that we're all in it together, bouncing off each other, that we are both wave and particle. And what we do kind of affects somebody else, you know, that butterfly effect and entanglement theory and all of those kind of things. I really think we're moving into this new paradigm that is more than the age of Aquarius. But anyway, much love. See you next time.